This video is about calculating the development length in reinforced concrete. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete crazy. So if I've got a structure that looks like this and I have a load on the outside edge, now I'm gonna talk about my reinforcement that's inside of it. That's shown by this dashed line. That's a rebar. And how far that rebar is actually embedded into that wall or into that column, that distance, that dimension is called development length. It's crazy important and that's what this video is all about. I've shot a previous video about this. If you haven't watched it yet, you have to go check it out because it's about worms and concrete, really about development length. But back to our concrete structure with the load on the outside edge. This is kind of like a towel rack. Yeah, a towel rack. And if you ever wondered what the towel rack looks like on the inside or what it looks like if you tried to pull it out, I wanted to prove it to you. I wanted to show it to you. So I got a hammer out and smacked it. Yeah. Yeah. It was in my guest bathroom, so that's for you, concrete crazies. This is what it looks like. It rips out of the wall. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. What if we could do this in concrete? And I said, well, I devised an experiment to do it. I said, what happens really inside of concrete? So I took a concrete prism embedded a bar in it, and we started to pull on it on the outside. If my eye was looking down the edge, it would look like this in the cross section. There's a single bar in the center of this concrete prism. And here's the experiment. So as we start to load this, we can see some cracks start to form on the surface. As the load increases more and more and more, again, you can see more cracks and eventually it goes along the length of the bar. That crack gets longer and longer and longer and then eventually it's game over. Yeah, that's not good. So what happened? Well. I'm showing two views here, the same ones I showed before. The cracks started to form at the very front. That means the bar started to debond. It started to pull out a little bit, but it wasn't that big of a deal. It still had plenty of capacity. But as we started to load the bar more and more and more, the cracks extended and they went outside. And once these cracks started to split, started to break the concrete around it, that's when it ripped right out of the concrete. Ah, that's not, Good. If you forgot what it looked like, here it is. So what happens in real concrete structures? I mean, that was like a little prismy thing. What happens in a big concrete structure, one that may look like this? Well, you have to ask yourself your question, what is the closest boundary? That's how you have to figure out this problem. So if I have a structure that looks something like this, I'd say, hey, that's the closest boundary. That is the closest edge from my bar toward the outside surface of my concrete. And that is where the cracks, no, we're gonna form. And if the outside boundary is closest here, then we will see the cracks form there. Again, this will allow the bar to rip right out of the concrete, but this, can also happen. The bars can be so close together that the cracks, no, form in between. And again, the bars can rip right out. They form that weak plane. That's not good. So what are the things that impact development length? Well, I've already showed you the distance to the boundary. That's a big one. The strength of your concrete or your rebar, the size of your rebar or the rebar surface. What? Rebar surface? I'm showing two rebars here. The green one has epoxy coating around the outside. Epoxy coating is to protect the rebar from outside chemicals coming in, but when it does, it makes it not bond as well. And you have to increase the development length by 20 to 50%. I'll talk more about that coming up. So if I have a structure like this, there's another one. There's something called the top bar effect. The top bar, what's that caused by? It's caused by concrete bleeding. That's when the water comes to the surface, the bleed water, because the rock and the sand and the cement is heavy. The water is a little bit lighter, so it's gonna separate and come to the surface. And ACI 318 takes that into account. It's called the top bar effect. If this water pools, on the bottom of the rebars, then this will increase the water cement ratio. This will decrease the strength of the concrete there, and you will need a larger development length for that structure. Anytime you are casting concrete where you have a bar that's more than 12 inches above the bottom of the concrete, then you must include the top bar effect. The top bar will increase the development length by 30%. Yeesh. 
ACI has taken all of this and put it into one equation. It's right here. It's got all these factors in it that multiply to give a number that that's multiplied by the bar diameter that gives you the development length. Usually this number is between 40 and 60 bar diameters, but it has to be also greater than 12 inches. Now there's lots of terms in here. Some of these are constants, like the strength of your steel, like the strength of your concrete. And then there is this term right here, the C sub B plus KTR divided by DB. That takes into account how close you are to the outside and also how confined your bar is that you're trying to develop. What am I talking about? Well, you have this C sub B plus KTR over D DB. It has to be less than 2.5. Your C sub B, that is the smaller of the cover of your steel or one half the clear spacing. I'll work an example problem coming up and that will make more sense. That is that closest distance that I talked about before. Then we have our KTR. That is something called ATR. That is the area of your tie, usually a number four bar, times your FY divided by 1500 times the spacing of the ties times the numbered of bars being developed. That again will make more sense once I show you a worked example. And all of this is divided by the diameter of your bar and it has to be less than 2.5. Hey, a good estimate for all of this, if you don't have any of this information is 1.5. If you don't know these things, you can just estimate it's about 1.5 or so. So in this problem, there are all these other terms. There is something called Psi T, Psi E, Psi S, and gamma. These are things that are multiplied in the numerator, so they either increase or decrease our development length. Psi T is something we call the top bar effect. I showed you that before in images. If we have more than 12 inches of fresh concrete cast below the bar, then my Psi T is 1.3, otherwise it's one. If I have epoxy coated steel, then I need 1.2, or if the cover is less than three bar diameters or the spacing is less than six bar diameters, I need 1.5. If it is uncoated or black steel, then I use a one. Now, this Psi T and Psi E is limited to be less than 1.7. And then again, we have our splitting thing. This, this Psi is about how bar, large our diameter of our bar is. If we have a smaller size bar, we can use 0.8. If we have a larger bar than a number seven or larger than I, we, I can use a one. And if I am using an aggregate uh, that is a lightweight aggregate, I use a Psi of 1.3. Now you can reduce your designed development length by this AS required over AS provided. That means if I use 20% more steel in my concrete than I really need for my design, or if my moment that I'm providing is 20% more than what I really need for design, this means I can reduce my development length by that ratio and that can be very valuable sometimes. Now you might say, how about bundled bars? Bundled bars, what are those? That's when I have bars that are tied together. You can see them here in this column cage. And if I have two bars together, then I can just use the development link, the same equation I showed you before. If I have three, I have to increase that number by 20%. If I have four, I have to increase it by 33%. And I can't have more than four when it comes to bundled bars. Now, what do I do if I don't have enough space for this development length. Ah, what do I do? Well, of course, I call in Captain Hook. Shimmer Timbers. By Captain Hook, I was talking about a hooked bar. There are two different flavors primarily out there. There are the ones that look like candy canes, and then there are the ones that look like L's. Now, when we design these things, we're, we're, we're gonna calculate this number called LDH. That is the development length of the hooked bar. And when I have a candy cane, I have to loop this sucker around, and I have to at least be four bar diameters or two and a half inches. If I have a straight bar, then this distance right here, from the edge to the end of the bar, has to be at 
least 12 bar diameters. So again, we are designing, we are using this equation down here, which has a bunch of factors, multiplied by 0.02 times my same epoxy coated factor I showed you before, my same lightweight aggregate factor I showed you before. We have the yield strength of the bar at the top, square root of F prime C in the bottom, all of that multiplied by the diameter of the bar. Now, this equation has to be greater than eight times the bar diameter or also greater than six inches as well. Let's talk about these factors in front. They're not that hard in this situation. If I have side cover, I can't really see that in this picture that would come in and out of the page. If I have a large enough side cover greater than two and a half inches or if I have a large enough back cover greater than two inches, then I can decrease my hook length by 0.7. My hook length, yeah, that's that LDH, that straight thing. That is this equation. I can use a 0.7 there. If my stirrup spacing there around the bar, if my stirrups are spaced less than three bar diameters, then I can use a 0.8. And then again, I can use that same AS required over AS provided, and I can reduce it by that ratio. So I hope you liked this video. Please, if you did give me a thumbs up, think about subscribing to my channel and always leave me comments. I love me some comments. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler. Take care everybody, bye.